Hi everyone, this demonstration is going to show you how to place a traditional dental dam on a patient for isolation. So my patient is actually a mannequin for demonstration purposes. We're going to look at our setup first. We have a dental dam punch, a basic setup, the dental dam material, we have a frame, I have a molar clamp, so there's a lot of different clamp varieties, but I know that I'm clamping a molar, so I just selected one that I thought would work. And I have some floss, floss for the teeth prior to placement, as well as floss to ligate the clamp. We also need a dental dam forceps. This is what is going to help us place the clamp on the teeth. This instrument has um, an interesting action. When we squeeze something, we expect it to close. But on these clamps, we squeeze it and the tip widens, it opens up. And then we have a locking mechanism to help keep it in place. So if I keep it locked like this, it will stay in this opened position. If I release the lock, and I'm just using gravity, squeezing, tipping up, squeezing, tipping down to unlock. So that takes a little bit of getting used to as a new assistant. Off screen, I have an ink pad and a stamp. We're going to use a stamp to help us punch the dam correctly. With this traditional dental dam placement, we're actually going to isolate an entire quadrant. We're going to clamp tooth number 18, and we're going to go to the opposing canine, the opposite canine, which would be 27. So I've lightly inked my stamp pad here. Center it on your dental dam material and press. So lightly ink it. We don't want too much ink. You just want to see the dots. So 32 dots for 32 teeth. Not all patients have 32 teeth, but I am, you can't change your stamp. So we're going to clamp from tooth 18 all the way to the opposing canine over here. The other thing to ready is the clamp. So I'm not sure if this is going to fit my patient. I'm going to try it in. Before I try it in, I have to ligate it. Ligating just means we're tying a string or a floss around the clamp. Ligating is very important for small items. If we can ligate it, we should because if the clamp were to pop off during placement or any time during the procedure, we run a risk of the patient swallowing this small item. If it were to pop off and go near or down the patient's throat, I could pull on the string and retrieve this small clamp. When you look at the clamp, we'll look at it a little more closely. This is a winged clamp. Each side is the jaw. On the jaw, we have holes. The holes is where your dental dam forceps will fit into. The bow is the arch that connects the right and left side. In the very center, we have these sharp points. Those are the jaws. I'm sorry, those are the prongs of the jaw. And then this square piece and this rounded edge, these are wings. Not all clamps have wings, but we need a wing style clamp to do the placement method that I'm showing you today. I'm going to just go ahead and punch this dental dam. When you look at your dental dam punch, there are five holes on it. Some have six. The largest hole is a five. Any tooth receiving the clamp is punched to size five. Doesn't matter if it's molar, premolar, canine, incisor, maxillary, mandibular. If it's receiving a clamp, it gets a size five. Size four is for all molars without a clamp. Size three is for all premolars without a clamp. Size two 
is all maxillary anterior without a clamp. That's canines and incisors. And size one is all mandibular anterior teeth without a clamp, canines and incisors. I'm going to start with a size five and find the corresponding dot for tooth number 18. So remember, I'm not starting at 17, I'm starting at 18, the dot in front. Easiest way to do this is to try to hold your material snug and then squeeze your punch. You'll hear a click, switch for the molar, 17 is not punched, 18 is the clamp, so it got size five. 19 is a molar, gets a size four. 20 and 21 premolars, they get a size three punch. All the rest, canine, lateral, central, central, lateral canine, all get size one because I'm on mandibular. So we're just going to quickly punch these. Get that satisfying click. Now, when you look at your dam once it's punched, you might notice not all the holes punch cleanly. You could pull these little tabs off. Just be careful. You can see it can cause the dam to tear. I'm working with a pretty tough dental dam here. This is a really great dental dam. Um, very sturdy, less likely to tear. This is Dermadam from Ultra Dent. Now what I can do is I can try in my clamp. Before I actually try the clamp on the tooth, I want to inspect the area where the dam will be placed. So I'm going to look at tooth number 18 all the way through the opposing canine. I want to make sure there's nothing that would affect my placement of the dental dam. I'm then going to floss. The mannequin, you can see, doesn't have any cheeks. That's for demonstration purposes. Floss the teeth. If your floss does not go through, your dental dam will not go through. So I flossed all the teeth. No problems with the floss going through, so I expect the dental dam to go through very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the prongs of my dental dam forceps into these holes. Squeeze the handle to stretch it out. I'm actually going to change hand positions so I don't bump the camera. I'm going to hold the floss out to the side and I'm going to start on the lingual surface and stretch the clamp by squeezing the handle and then rock to the buckle side. Now we have to test to make sure it's stable. You shouldn't be able to pull your clamp off. 
So your clamp should be nice and stable on the tooth. If it doesn't fit properly, if it pops off or it's too loose, try a different size. This is a good fit. I will be using this one, so I'm going to remove the clamp so I can move on to the next step. Place the prongs that are on the dental dam forceps into those holes on the clamp, squeeze and lift off. Don't leave it in the stretched out position for very long. Let the clamp relax, otherwise you could permanently stretch out your clamp. Now what I need to do is slip the size five hole around the wings of the clamp. When you look at your clamp, this bow always faces the posterior side. So on our stamp, we have a nice horizontal line. Make sure your bow faces that. The arch of the bow goes away from the teeth that we're working on. So what we have to do, you have to use both hands, stretch out your dam, insert one of the square wings on one side, switch hands, and then continue to stretch that hole over the other square wing, just like so. So right now that clamp is stuck in that hole just by the wings. If I turn it upside down, you can see the wings are on the underside. I can then take my dental dam forceps, place the prongs into those holes, and squeeze and lock it into position. And it can stay on the tray like this as long as it's not too stretched out. Like I mentioned, you don't want to keep it in an extreme stretched out position for too long. When I'm placing the dental dam, what I need to do is hold on to the dam so that I can stretch these holes out. If you notice that molar hole in front of the clamp, if I don't stretch it out, gets bunched up and can get lost in there. If that happens, you're going to be a hole short when you get to your canine. So again, this is a very traditional textbook method of placing a dental dam. What I'm going to do is, let me try to hold it out of the, the mouth like this. What you have to do is you have to look through that hole created by the dental dam. You're going to count your teeth. I know I'm on the second molar. So I look at the first, I aim for the second. I'm just going to push this back so we can see. Pull on the front of the dam so that molar hole does not get lost. Squeeze the handle that you're holding of your dental dam forceps and then place the clamp on the cervical area of the tooth. Now working on this cheekless mannequin is a little more challenging, but it makes it easier to see in the video. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to stretch each hole and floss the dam between the teeth. Again, keeping the holes stretched. And just hoping that I did not lose any of these holes. So again, keeping the dam stretched, we're less likely to lose the holes. Now some practitioners like to put the frame on before they do this step. It helps to keep the dam from flopping around in the patient's mouth. Others prefer poking the teeth through these holes and then putting the frame on. Um, 
I don't really have a preference personally, but that's how it should start to look. If you notice, there's still some dental dam material back here. We're going to take care of that with some floss. So we're not finished yet. We have to put the frame on. To attach your dental dam frame, it's the frame I'm using is U-shaped. This arch here fits over the patient's chin and the opening up here goes by the patient's nose. This is what I find students struggle with the most is getting this frame on. What you do, take the prong of the frame, stick it into your dental dam material. Don't poke a hole in it, but just with tension, stretch it out. Take the other corner, stretch it out, and the tension will help hold it in place. Now don't pull too hard. If we pull too hard, we're likely to dislodge that clamp. But all of the prongs should be engaged with the dam material. We have to do what's called inverting the dental dam. Inverting, turn it upside down, what we do is we floss, we push the dam into the sulcus gently and slide the floss out. So floss, push the dam, I like to kind of roll it into the sulcus. And we do that between every tooth. You'll see that the dam sits better. It sits lower on the teeth once we do this step. You might have to go a couple times on the same tooth just to get it into position where you'd like it. And you just continue all the way back to your clamp. Notice my mannequin's teeth are slightly loose here. You never know, your patient may have a loose tooth. And this last one back here can be a little tricky because we have the clamp in our way. So I know I've up the camera a little bit, but it's really close. I'm going to do this. It might take a little force, but we want to floss that down and slide it out. So this is looking pretty good. You can see all the little septa here. The septa is the dam material between the holes. Septa, septa, septa. Last thing, still not done. When you take a look at your clamp, you can see the holes here and we can see the pink gingiva underneath. We need to push the dental dam off the wings so it sits under those holes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take my fingers and pull it off those wings. Pull it off both wings. Have the luxury here of no cheeks. And now when you look at these holes, they're blocked by the dental dam. You don't see the gingiva because the dental dam has been pushed off the wings. So this is how a dental dam should look for a traditional quadrant isolation. The doctor can work on any teeth that have been isolated. Now a general rule of thumb, when possible, you isolate at least a tooth behind where you're working. So typically the doctor wouldn't work on this tooth if they're doing restorative. They could work on the tooth in front and they usually won't work on the last tooth. You can see how the dam creeps up. One way to 
fix that. Some offices tie a ligature around that tooth. So you would just tie this in a knot to help keep that dam in place. There are other devices, there's widgets, there's other little things that can help keep the dam from creeping up. After your procedure, we need to remove the dam properly. To remove the dam properly, keep everything assembled. Don't take anything off. Don't take the frame off, the clamp, leave it all together. Stretch the dental dam out to reveal those septa. Take a crown and bridge scissors, some sort of blunt scissors, and cut the facial side of the septa. Don't cut both sides. If you cut both sides, you'll end up with the piece stuck between the teeth. You have to cut every septa all the way back to the clamp. Just like that. Then what we need to do is the dental dam could still be stuck on the lingual surfaces or on the lingual embrasure, the space between the teeth. To help loosen it, stick your finger on the lingual side of the dam and just pull it away. You may have heard that pop of it disconnecting from those lingual embrasures. Now I can take my forceps and remove everything at the same time. We'll have to do a little tug. It's still kind of stuck on number 18. Take your forceps, insert the prongs into those holes, squeeze, hold on to your frame, lift everything out at one time. Inspect your patient's mouth for any leftover dental dam pieces. You can give them a courtesy floss, courtesy rinse. I didn't realize how loose these teeth were. I should have checked that before. It made it a little more challenging, but we're still able to get through it. Now you can take the frame off the dental dam. And what I'm going to do is just look carefully at my dental dam and make sure there's no big chunks or missing pieces. I should just have my holes. It works better if you put it down on your paper. So when you inspect your dental dam after you remove it, you notice that you should just have all of your punched holes with a cut running through them, a single cut. Once your patient has been assisted with removing any pieces of dental dam that could be remaining, we can then dismiss them. There's one last thing I'd like to show you. If you're working on a patient that has a bridge or it's their contact area is too tight and you can't easily floss between the teeth and you know your dental dam won't fit really nicely between two teeth, we can overlap some holes. And how we do that is we take our punch, and depending on the teeth, if it's two molars, let's go back to size four, you would punch one hole, and then you would overlap the second hole. creating more of an oval shape. So I just created a double molar size hole versus, let's do a single molar size next to it. So a single molar size versus a double molar size. So if you, t if you have two teeth that are very hard to floss between, you can do a double punch and just stretch this over two teeth instead of one. That's a little trick to use on bridges or when you have very tight contacts.
Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful.